Good morning. My name is Karina Ene, and I am with the Office of Federal Programs. On behalf of Superintendent Halfmeister and the State Department of Education, I would like to welcome you to the ESA Flexibilities webinar. We are going to talk about all the flexibility that are applicable to programs that are handled in the Office of Federal Programs, and they are Title I, Part A, Part C and B, Title II, Part A, Title III, Part A, Title IV, Part A, Title V, Part B, and Title IX, Part A. Lots of parts and lots of titles. So starting with the Title I, Part A, one of the flexibilities talks about the consolidation of admin funds. And um, that refers to the LEAs that uh, with the approval of the state educational agency, which is the State Department of Education, uh, have the flexibility to consolidate and use funds for the administration of one or more programs under ESA. Uh, Oklahoma State Department of Education uses Project 786 for consolidated admin funds. Another flexibility under Title I Part A refers to the locally selected, nationally recognized high school academic assessments. An LEA may administer a nationally recognized high school academic assessment in place of the statewide academic assessment in any subject if the LEA selects a nationally recognized high school academic assessment that has been approved for use by the state. If an LEA elects this option, the parents of high school students shall be notified of its request to the SEA for approval to administer such a locally selected assessment. OSDE approved ACT and SAT as college and career readiness assessments and gave LEAs the option to use such assessments in grade 11 uh, instead of state-developed high school assessments. Public school choice is another flexibility under Title I, Part A. Uh, keep in mind that this is an option, is not a requirement anymore. But anyway, an LEA has the discretion to offer students enrolled in a school that is identified by the state for comprehensive support and improvement with the option to transfer to another public school served by the LEA. ESA section 1111 outlines all the requirements for this implementation. Any public school choice option provided by an LEA under these provisions must still be consistent with the state law. Um, an LEA may also spend up to 5% of its Title I Part A allocation to pay for transportation for students who take advantage of this public school choice option. If you recall, under No Child Left Behind, this was a requirement, but under ESA, this is a, um, an option or a flexibility. Another flexibility refers to the school improvement activities and um, that talks about an LEA identified by the state for comprehensive support and improvement shall develop a plan that is informed by all indicators described in ESA section 1111, includes evidence-based interventions, is based on school level needs assessment, identifies resource inequities, is approved by the school, the LEA and the SEA, and is monitored and periodically reviewed by the SEA. The flexibility around this option is that the LEA may determine which evidence-based interventions to include in each comprehensive support and improvement plan. You probably um, have um, more directions and more support from the School Improvement Division at the State Department of Education. Under Title I Part A, another flexibility refers to the student-centered funding pilot. An LEA may apply to enter into a local demonstration flexibility agreement with the United States Department of Education Secretary to consolidate eligible federal funds with state and local funds in order to create a single school funding system based on weighted per pupil allocations for low income and disadvantaged students. U.S. Department of Education Secretary is authorized to provide waivers for LEAs in entering into such agreement for provisions of this act that would otherwise prevent such agency from using eligible federal funds as part of such agreement. 
an LEA operating under this flexibility is required to use weights or allocation amounts that distribute substantially more funding to English learners, students from low income families, and students with any other characteristics associated with educational disadvantage chosen by the, by the LEA uh, than to other students. Because this is an agreement between the LEA and USDE, additional information, including an application, is available at this link provided on this slide. We don't have um, much knowledge about this, but if you are interested to find more information or um, if this sparkled your interest to become part of this agreement, please go and follow this link to find more information. Another flexibility in Title I Part A refers to the school-wide programs. And uh, the criteria to operate a school-wide program is uh, if the school has 40% or more students from low-income families, then the school is allowed to implement a school-wide program. This is a program um, as a, uh, that's defined as a comprehensive reform strategy designed to improve the entire educational program in a Title I school in order to improve the achievement of lowest achieving students by coordinating services funded, funded from a variety of sources into a comprehensive framework. OSDE allows LEAs to implement this flexibility in the Title I Part A application as part of the consolidated application in the Grants Management System or GMS. <clears throat> the consolidation of funds in school-wide programs is another flexibility and that refers to the U.S. Department of Education secretary that has uh, the power invested in, in that person through publication of a notice in the Federal Register to exempt school-wide programs under this section from statutory or regulatory provisions of any other non-competitive formula grant programs or discretionary grant programs administered by the U.S. Department of Education uh, Secretary to support school-wide programs if the intent and purpose of, this, uh, of such programs are met. The Office of Federal Programs already implements this flexibility and allows the following non-competitive formula grant programs as they were authorized by the Secretary of Education in the Federal Register uh, dated in July 2004 to be consolidated in Project 785. Uh, and those are Title I Part A, Title I Part C, Title I Part D, Title II Part A, Title III Part A, Title IV Part A, Title V Part B. Uh, Title IX Part A, which is the McKinney-Vento Education of Homeless Children and Youth, is a competitive program and it is an option uh, to be consolidated and it is projected to become available for consolidation in the FY21 consolidated application. Although there were other programs that, uh, that were allowed by U.S. Department of Education Secretary to be consolidated in school-wide programs, they are either un under standalone divisions at the Oklahoma State Department of Education or they are under the Oklahoma Department of Career and Technology Education and therefore could not be included in Project 785. And those programs that uh, still benefit of the consolidation of funds are Title IV Part B, which is 21st century, Title VI Part A, Indian Education, Title VII, which is Impact, Impact Aid, IDA Part B, and Carl Perkins Vocational and Applied Technology Act. As I mentioned in the slide before, um, the requirement to operate a school-wide program is the 40% uh, poverty level or students from low-income families, uh, but uh, LEAs or schools may apply for a waiver to the State Department to operate a school-wide school program uh, where the poverty level is under 40%. And that may happen through um, the consolidated application where LEAs may complete the school-wide and targeted assistance intention page that's part of um, the consolidated application. 
or Title I. Not sure, but uh, it is in the FY20 consulted application. It's a tab there. Now keep in mind, if you have new schools that want to become or operate a school-wide program in FY20, you must complete this tab. Again, it's just for schools that apply for the first time to become school-wide. Uh, and you must submit this intention uh, along with the application, the FY20 consult application, by September 30th. If you miss that date, the, the school will not be allowed to operate as school-wide in FY20. And again, to complete the process, the school-wide plan must be submitted in GMS by September, 20, uh, by September 30th as well, sorry. Another flexibility in Title I Part A is the rank order exception. And Section 1113 uh, mentions that the rank order rules under the eligible school attendance areas in ESA shall not apply to a local education agency with a total enrollment of less than 1,000 children. OSD also follows, uh, in addition to this ESA Section 1113, uh, follows the USDE non-regulatory guidance identification and selection of school attendance area uh, dated 2003, which allows the LDAs with one school per grade level to also be exempted from the rank order. Another flexibility under Title I Part A refers to the set aside for homeless children and youth and LEAs have the flexibility to reserve Title I Part A funds as are necessary to provide services to homeless children and youth comparable to those provided to children in schools funded under this part. If you recall, until last year, um, LEAs uh, had to reserve 1%, but um, now I think it's a bit more flexible and you will reserve funds as necessary, but keep in mind you still have to have a comparable amount um, referring to um, or com a comparable amount with the allocation or the per pupil allocation that you have for regular students in Title I schools. Cannot be a very big discrepancy. Another flexibility in Title I Part A is uh, the supplement not supplant. An LEA demonstrate comp demonstrates compliance with the Title I Part A supplement not supplant requirement by using a methodology to allocate state and local funds to each Title I school, which ensures that each school receives all the state and local funds it would otherwise receive if it were not receiving Title I funds. LEA's methodology cannot be pres prescribed by USDE or by the SEA. LEA's methodology must be Title I neutral in that uh, it allocates state and local funds to schools without regard of their Title I status and the Title I allocation that the school receives. Supplanting is no longer determined based on the individual cost or service paid with Title I Part A funds. Rather, it is determined by the allocation of the state and local resources to schools and whether such resources are allocated without regard to a school's Title I status. OSDE follows ESA Section 1118 and allows LEAs to demonstrate compliance with the Title I Part A Supplement Not Supplant requirement by uploading a methodology in the consolidated application to demonstrate how state and local funds are allocated to each school, including Title I schools. Moving to Title I Part A Neglected, um, the flexibility under these programs refers to the possibility to consolidate these funds into consolidation of funds program. 785. Title I Part C, uh, again, this program has the option or the flexibility to consolidate and use these funds under the school-wide program. Uh, and um, the LEA still has 
um, the responsibility to continue addressing the identified needs of migratory children that result from their migratory lifestyle and shall meet the unique educational needs of migratory children before using the funds under the school-wide consolidation of funds. In the planning and operation of programs and projects at both state and local agency uh, operating level, there must be consultation with parents of migratory children. So as you can see before uh, an LEA consolidate funds under Project 785, there are some requirements that the LEA must meet before uh, it does that. Title I, Part D, Subpart 1, um, has the flexibility for state agencies to implement institution-wide projects. A such project serves all children in and upgrades the entire educational effort of the institution or program. If a state agency wishes to implement an institution-wide project, SR requires that the state agency develop and the state educational agency approves a comprehensive plan that meets the requirements of ESA section 1416. Currently in Oklahoma, there are no state agencies for neglected or delinquent children and youth operating an institu institution-wide project. Title one part D subpart two refers to the flexibilities that uh, LEAs have and um, the flexibility applicable to Title I Part D for LEAs is the consolidation of funds under Project 785. Another flexibility would be the Pay for Success initiative. And Pay for Success is an evidence-based, innovative approach to support private sector or philanthropic initiatives to improve the academic achievement of neglected, delinquent, or at-risk children and youth. Instead of funding services, regardless of the results, the government and other entities, such as state agencies or LEAs, may enter into an agreement with these philanthropic or private investors and pay for interventions that actually achieve the agreed upon outcomes. We are moving to Title II, Part A, and one of the flexibilities is to form consortia. And section 2102 mentions that LEA designated with a locale code of 41, 42, or 43, or LEAs designated with these locale codes of 41, 42, or 43 that work in cooperation with an educational service agency may form a consortia on a voluntary base, basis. Um, and combine their allocations received under Title II Part A for the collective use of funding um, by the consortium for activities under this section. Currently in Oklahoma, there is one consortium, the Interlocal Cooperative, that combines several LEA's Title II Part A allocations. Another flexibility under Title II Part A is the class size reduction teachers and um, a school has the flexibility to reduce class size to a level that is evidence based to the extent that the state in consultation with the LEA um, or the LEAs in the state determines that such evidence is reasonably available to improve student achievement through the recruiting and hiring of additional effective teachers. Another flexibility under Title II Part A is the consolidation of funds under Project 785. So this Title II Part A funds can also be transferred to Project 785. Another flexibility under Title II Part A refers to the PD activities, which were open for teachers, principals, and other school leaders specialized instructional support personnel and paraprofessionals. The term school leader means a principal, assistant principal, or other individual who is an employee or officer of an elementary or secondary school or is, or is responsible for the daily instructional leadership and managerial operations in the elementary or secondary school building. That being said, 
uh, under no child left behind it was a bit restrictive and only uh, teachers and principals uh, and superintendents could go to professional activities allowable under title II part a but now under ESA this door has opened to um, a lot of personnel in a school and district and again um, if a person falls under the definition of a school leader or is a teacher principal or superintendent that he or she may be allowed to participate in these activities. Title II Part A funds also have the flexibility to be transferred to Title I Part A, Title I Part C, Title I Part D, Title III Part A, Title IV Part A, and Title V Part B. Along with this transferability um, responsibility or flexibility, let's say, uh, there are uh, some requirements and more flexibilities. Um, Title II Part A by nature are subject to the equitable service requirements which may not be waived and there is a citation of the law under Section 8, 8401. Before an LEA may transfer funds from um, a program subject to equitable services requirements, which is in this case is Title II Part A, the LEA must engage in timely and meaningful consultation with appropriate private school officials. The flexibility that's actually given to the LEA uh, refers to the transfer funds, uh, which the LEA um, has the flexibility to provide private school students and teachers equitable services um, to which and from which to the program uh, and from which program the funds are transferred based on the total amount of funds available to each program after the transfer. That means that after consultation with private school officials um, and uh, informing them that they have uh, the possibility to participate in the program to which Title II funds are transferred, then the LEA has the flexibility to offer or to reserve funds um, uh, in Title II Part A only based on the amount that is left behind in Title II. Moving to Title III Part A, one of the flexibilities refers to forming consortia. Um, so LEAs uh, may join together to form a consortium of LEAs to receive Title III Part A formula funds. One of the LEAs must become a fiscal agent for the consortium. Uh, and this option uh, becomes more relevant to LEAs that uh, on their own do not have sufficient numbers of English learners to receive the minimum allocation of $10,000. So they will pull their numbers together and they will be allocated at least $10,000. Another flexibility under Title III Part A refers to direct admin expensive, expenses. And these direct admin expenses may be incurred by each eligible entity receiving funds under Section 3114 for a fiscal year in the amount of not more than 2% of such funds for the cost of uh, administration of this part. That gives LEAs the flexibility to charge in addition to the direct admin costs, indirect costs at the restricted negotiated IDC rate established by the LEA. If you recall, under No Child Left Behind, you were limited to 2% of combined um, admin funds and IDC, so you could not exceed the 2%, but now uh, you may reserve 2% for admin funds or admin expenses and the IDC as well, in addition to that. Title III Part A funds also have the flexibility to be consolidated in Project 785. Moving to Title IV Part A, LEAs 
in a state may form a consortium with other surrounding local educational agencies and combine the funds each such agency in the consortium receives under this section to jointly carry out the local activities described in this subpart. Another flexibility for Title IV Part A funds is to be consolidated in Project 785 and also to be transferred. So Title IV Part A may be transferred to Title I Part A, Title I Part C, Title I Part B, Title II Part A, Title III Part A, and Title V Part B. This is pretty much the same uh, flexibility that is under Title II as a program that allows transferability. Um, LEA must provide equitable services to private school students and teachers, and this requirement may not be waived. Uh, they must engage in timely and meaningful consultation with appropriate private school officials, and districts have the flexibility to provide these private school services based on the total amount, amount of funds available to the program after the transfer. Title V Part B, um, the flexibility here uh, refers to LEAs that are eligible for the Small Rural School Achievement Program, also known as SRSA, um, under Title V Part B. And um, there is the flexibility that these LEAs have in using the formula grant funds they receive under certain state administered programs. This flexibility is called the Alternative Fund Use Authority. In other words, um, SRSA eligible entities, LEAs, have the flexibility to reap what we know uh, as reaping funds. And when LEAs reap funds, um, there are uh, several programs on the funding tab, tab, I believe, where they can indicate the program under which they, will, they would like to um, spend the RIP funds. So, and those programs, the allowable activities uh, will be under Title I Part A, Title II Part A, Title III Part A, Title IV Part A, and B. Uh, however, when eligible LEAs RIP funds, um, they will not be subject to all the rules and requirements of the program under which the allowable use is found. In other words, if you RIP Title II funds and Title IV funds um, and you want to follow um, the rules or, or you want to uh, implement activities under, let's say, Title IV Part A, then uh, not all rules and regulations that we find, uh, we, we find them normally in Title IV Part A will be applicable. Also, if you want to reap funds and do activities under Title III Part A, but you are not a recipient of a Title III Part A allocation, you are allowed to do that. Exercising the AFUA, is not considered transferability and therefore uh, the LEA is not relieved of the responsibility to provide equitable services to private school students and teachers and must reserve funds of its Title II Part A and 4A for these purposes. So reaping is different than transferring funds. Under Title IX Part A, um, the flexibility refers to the fact that these funds may be used to serve all homeless children and youth in the LEA in both Title I and non-Title I schools. Even in the absence of the competitive grant funds under Title IX Part A, LEAs uh, may use Title I Part A funds for the purpose of providing services to homeless children and youth in non-Title I schools, shelters, and other locations where these children may live, comparable to those provided to children in Title I schools. Uh, 
under um, title nine part A, homeless students attending any school served by the LEA, uh, even schools without a preschool program are eligible for services under this part, including the preschool enrollment. A local liaison should remind preschool program staff of how important preschool services are for homeless children and how waiting lists often create barriers for homeless families who wish to enroll their children. Some preschool programs keep slots open specifically for homeless children who are also automatically eligible to attend preschool programs funded under Title I. Moving on, um, under the State and Local Transferability Act, all LEAs have the authority to transfer funds from Title II Part A and Title IV Part A formula grants to the following provisions. Title I Part A, Title I Part C, Title I Part D, Title II Part A, Three Part A, Four Part A, and Five Part B. Once Title II Part A and Title IV Part A are transferred to one of those mentioned programs, they become uh, subject to the rules and requirements applicable to that respective program. So when you move Title II, when you transfer Title II Part A into Title I Part A, then uh, they become Title I funds and the entire amount, including this tra uh, transfer Title II Part A, will become subject to the homeless set aside equitable um, services for private school students. Um, parental involvement if that's applicable to your LEA and so on. So you will not have um, that clear amount if you transfer, let's say $100,000 from Title II to Title I, you will not have, uh, you know, pure $100,000 to be uh, allocated to the schools because you have to do the set aside off the top. Before you engage in this transfer, uh, you will have to provide consultation uh, with private schools and uh, private school officials to ensure that uh, they do understand their option to participate in private school services or equitable services under the program to which Title II or Title IV funds are transferred to. Here is my contact information and uh, you can call me, you can email me. Um, this PowerPoint will be uploaded on the website in a couple of days. There will also be a document, a Word document that will uh, have a more um, narrative format and will have uh, the same information but into a, li a little bit more detail that will be also uploaded on the website. And I am open to questions. So if you have anything that you would like to ask, please type in the chat box and I will do my best to answer the questions. <laughs>